What happened at your work which caused multiple people to all quit at once? Story 1. Oh boy. I worked at a Buffalo Wild Wings for a few years as a line cook. Two different stores, same freaking pay. It was the type of work where you ask for a raise and they scoff and say, Yeah, me too. Anyways, it had been pretty dead set on quitting sooner or later. Our kitchen was very small. Most people ended up closing four to five days a week with doubles on the weekends while still attending school full time as it was a college town. On Super Bowl freaking Sunday, a useless coworker who ducked out in the bathroom most of the shift finally stopped showing, and in response, the managerial staff delegated closing to my pal Jay. Dude was a freaking delight to be around, hands down the best coworker ever. Jay had told them that due to being a full time student, he no longer wanted to be first in and last out, 4 pm to 12 am, 1 am on the weekends. They basically told him to go freak himself, that they don't have any more shifts for him. Immediately, I and one other cook walked to the office and quit on the spot. Buffalo Wild Wings lost four cooks in Super Bowl Sunday, leaving them with seven full-time students on the schedule. It was awful management. Story 2 When I was 16, I worked in the concession stand at a minor league baseball stadium. The minimum wage at the time was $5.15 an hour. This job paid $8, and it was always in the evenings, so it was perfect for a high school student. The only bad thing was our management was terrible. The main manager would throw toddler tantrums about once a shift over stupid bullshit, like not ordering enough of a specific beer, she did the ordering, or running out of pre-cut lemons for tea. One night the stadium was running a promotion and was incredibly busy, easily two to three times normal volume of customers. We were all working our butts off, handling multiple roles, each with absolutely no downtime. Although we all cleaned as we worked, nobody had a chance to do thorough cleaning for the whole shift because of the never-ending horde of hungry baseball fans. The manager shows up three to four hours late, per usual, and throws the biggest freaking tantrum ever over the unswept floor. Finally, she announces, Listen up, you lazy fools. Minimal work gets minimal pay. Everybody's being paid minimum wage tonight because you slobs won't clean up anything. Both of our bartenders in the bar back quit on the spot, which caused a chain reaction. We all took off our aprons and hats to leave. She blocked the exit and was right in the face from screaming. So one of the cooks climbed out of one of the big serving windows where we served customers. So I did the same and most of the staff followed. Bear in mind that this all happened in front of like 200 plus customers. Of course, my final paycheck got lost, so I had to file a wage theft complaint with the Texas Workforce Commission. Story 3 I was hired by the new owners to replace the existing manager. I was under the impression that he was moving on to another job somewhere, so after about four days, I asked him where he was headed and if he was excited. He just looks blankly at me and says, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just training you as the assistant manager, right? The look I gave him must have been a great tip-off because he got up and walked into one of the new owner's offices. After about 30 seconds, they were screaming at each other. Then he just storms out of the office, grabs his stuff, gives me the finger, and leaves. Over the next few days, I'm trying to calm things with the employees. They're not faulting me, but now have a very bad taste in their mouths about the new ownership. Over about a 7 to 10 day time period, my team shrank from 15 people down to 3. I hobbled along without the best I could while we tried to hire new people, but the new owners were offering so little we had trouble finding people. After 3 months or so of that, I started to get fed up and overwhelmed, and when the owners started to get on me about missed deadlines, I had it. We were still only at 5 people, 2 of which were brand new and still training. They didn't allow me to refuse work or push deadlines out. They expected the same output as a 15-person team. So after my third day in a row of being berated for missing a deadline that was impossible to make, I quit. Story 4 Worked at a Wendy's and one of the regional managers started running a store because they and wouldn't find new managers to replace the old ones. Well, anyways, this guy practically ran the place into the ground. Before he started running the store, almost everyone liked working there as it was a good environment. A few months after, a couple of people quit because of him. And one day, I roll in at 9 to help open the store, and he comes over to my car as soon as I park. I was 15 minutes early and usually just sat in my car until 9, and tells me, Hey, uh, I need you to start early because the three openers just quit on me. We managed to get the store open and had several people from other stores help run the place until the people from the next shift came in. A couple of days later, I hear the full story of what happened from a co-worker. The regional manager is supposed to be at the store at 7 or so, and the openers are 30 minutes later. He didn't actually show up until 8.30. So when the openers, already pissed at being at work really early and not being on the clock, saw the regional manager roll in and knew it was going to be an awful shift, all decided that they were done with him and just quit right there. So at least six people quit because of him by the time I left the place. Probably more left after me. Story 5 Many years ago in high school, I worked at a movie theater. The place was pretty poorly run from the moment I started there. 
who never got paid on time and management was basically a bunch of lazy jackasses who sat in the office talking all day, never actually did any managing. It would have been hard for things to have gone any worse, but after a couple of months, they brought in new management who seemed to want to make it their mission to run the theater as poorly as possible. They first decided to implement a new policy requiring all projectionists to wear ties. Even though projectionists are never seen by the public, not to mention the tiny little detail that the projectionists worked around giant rapidly spinning objects that a tie could get caught in. Management refused to reconsider the policy and every single projectionist quit as a result. They then decided that the poor people, of which I was one, who were always scheduled seven days a week, would now only be scheduled on the weekends and refused to reassign any of us to concessions on the weekday so we wouldn't lose ours. As a result, almost every single door person quit, including me. After that, they started imposing impossible cleanliness standards and concessions, things as requiring them to scrape popcorn kernels out of the cracks in the trim behind the popcorn machines. Concessions were there until 5 a.m. every night, trying to meet their standards. Most of the concession people quit as a result. By my count, the theater went from a staff of about 50 to a staff of about 12 in three weeks. I swung by about a month after I quit and found out that the entire management staff had been fired and replaced yet again by an entirely new one one who actually seemed to be running the theater properly. My best guess is that the previous management had been told to whip the theater into shape and they were idiots who had no idea how to effectively do that. Story 6. Owners retired. They were literally the greatest people, both very sweet, but kept the place running like a well-oiled machine. They took pretty good care of us in the restaurant. When they left, they gave the restaurant over to their nephew, who at the time was a busboy waiter, kind of standoffish, didn't really interact with us too much, and was a bit lazy at times but for the most part did his shit and went home, he seemed okay. Until he got the power of being the owner. He fired four people, including two of the four cooks and two of the three dishwashers, literally that same day, on a Friday night just before the dinner rush, all because he didn't like their attitude. He refused to allow people to take vacations that they'd already requested and gone confirmed by the original owners, who changed the schedule randomly without telling anyone and then scream at people when they missed a shift or came in late because of it. He'd refuse to replenish the kitchen until we were literally already out of things, then take forever to put in the orders. He showed up randomly and would drink at the bar for free, of course, because he was the owner, and then bring in all his buddies to drink with him. Together, they'd get way out of hand and grab at women and try to start fights. Within the first month of him being the owner, over half of the staff had quit, usually walking out literally in the middle of their shifts after being screamed at. They'd basically throw down their aprons and tell everyone else that they were so sorry, but they couldn't do it anymore. After the last cook, this big dude who usually kept the kitchen laughing and running at a decent pace started crying in the middle of his shift and dropped everything he was doing after the boss came and yelled at him for being too slow and making slop, then walked out. The rest of us just bailed along with him. Four months later, the place was closed, and his aunt and uncle were absolutely furious and devastated that he'd run the business they'd built up for over 30 years into the ground. Story 7 Several years ago, I worked in a mental health center. We worked primarily with kids. It was time for the center to renew its certification. Instead of keeping up with everything that needed to be done over five years, the proper procedures were ignored. In this couple of months before recertification, the administration made us sit through a ridiculous amount of training on things that would have been covered in training, such as Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act laws and identifying child abuse. Then came our paperwork. Our center encouraged us to do things that aren't exactly covered by Medicaid or approved through certification. For example, taking kids to the park isn't allowed. But guess where they instructed us to take these kids so they didn't disturb the therapists working? I had to go back and added five months' work of documents to get rid of the evidence. The kicker was that the bathrooms were supposed to have a log of when it was cleaned. An administrator perfectly forged the signatures of multiple employees. I don't think they would have gone through that trouble just for a bathroom log. What else were they forging our signatures on? The potential risk of being charged with Medicaid fraud was too high for me. I quit, as did many others. I did report them to the authorities. Shockingly, they are still in business. I did what I had to cover my butt. Story 8 I'm the manager of a retail store and I found a cashier was stealing products by scamming reward card benefits. I came up with a detailed incident report to present to this employee and I was under the assumption it was just her. After I reasonably confronted her, she freaked out and got really angry and quit on the spot. She was using fake accounts instead of using a customer's reward card to get herself points and redeem them for products or gift cards. So the customers weren't getting the points they're owed, which is a headache for me if they notice and complain. The next day, every other cashier called me and quit. After thinking about what just happened, I found out they were all in on it and were using this lady's fake card in their shifts too. So I'm down four cashiers and have one left. The same day, my last remaining cashier disappeared for 20 minutes. Turns out she was in the bathroom with another employee doing the nasty. 
She quits because her dad is a cop and doesn't want to find out she got fired for this. She also asked me if she should go to urgent care because she didn't take her tampon out before they did it, and she couldn't find it. The guy also quit because he didn't care and was moving anyway. I was down to literally managers only. So the first part is the mass exodus and the last part was just for, can you believe this mess? Story 9. This is kind of a long story, but I worked at a discount store and it was that bad at first until one of our night managers quit and was replaced with, well, let's call her Becky. So Becky seemed nice at first, but we all started to notice her changing a lot of things around the store. People in the night crew got moved today, she gave people weird orders, and most of the time she wouldn't even be at the front when we needed her. She used to keep her phone on her all the time, like a phone call constantly, so she was always on the phone with her partner, who happened to be a manager from a neighboring store. One day someone stole a box of candy from the store and she literally went out there and got into a fist fight with him, which is a huge no-no. You're not supposed to go after a customer like that even if they did steal. So Becky comes in all bloodied in the face and we're not really sure what to say or do, so we all just look away and get back to work. After that, she acted really weird, throwing people under the bus and claiming we weren't doing our jobs, which is funny because she was never up front when we needed her. What ended up making pretty much the whole night crew quit was when Becky started getting grabby with one of her younger cashiers, and the girl was already in a bad place and didn't want to lose her job. So she tried to ignore it for a bit, but one day Becky tried to get the cashier in her car to take her home since she didn't have a ride, and the girl wasn't comfortable with it. She ended up calling me to come get her. She rejected Becky's approaches, so Becky went into full petty mode and claimed the cashier had on her and told the cashier to go home. The next day, the younger cashier was fired. So the younger cashier tried to tell our district manager about it, but he said there was nothing he could do. This was the last straw for everyone. And most of us quit within the month. Story 10. Years ago, I worked at a chain salon, my last ever, I swear. There were about 14 of us, plus my boss. Half of us were really good, very passionate about what we do, and we all booked with good clientele. Our boss was wonderful, didn't micromanage, etc. She was a big reason that while it was a chain, it didn't feel like one. She got fired. The reason given was that she cashed a check at work. She bought the product, paid for it with a check, and added an extra $40 so she didn't have to find an ATM before she went to the bar. She had worked for the company for five years, had pulled three shops into the highest ranking ones in the district, consistently had shops exceeding their numbers, etc. And just like that, she was fired. And even worse, when it came to work the next day, we weren't allowed to talk about it. I texted her and she told me what happened. We didn't quit at once exactly, but over the next four months, the top stylists, who brought in 70% of the revenue, left. We took our clientele with us and all of us went to smaller, private salons. This was several years ago now, but I still keep up with them. We've all found our niches in hair, make way more money, and are way happier for it, including my old boss. She's about to buy the salon she works at. If it didn't happen, I don't know when I would have left. To discover, I prefer barbering or men's styling over women's. It was a blessing in disguise at the very least. Story 11 the boss went off on a tirade on me for something that wasn't my fault, and I got him to scream, People like you are expendable pieces in this company, and I can replace you tomorrow if I wanted to. 80% of the engineers quit the next day, simply didn't show up, including me. From what I know, the entire project folded because my now ex-boss couldn't find people to replace us. After all, no one wanted to do the kind of work he was looking for at the salary he was paying. Story 12 a tattoo shop owner, who lived in another state, hired some ass tad to come revamp the shop. I had been managing for three years at this point, and he just expected me to teach him how to do my job so he could replace me. That guy had no clue how to run a shop. Plus, the owner had been embezzling money for her coke habit, and had blamed the longest standing artist at the shop for lost revenue. Accused him of stealing. I did the bucks. No one was stealing. She was nuts. Anyway, all the artists and I mutinied and left at the same time. Screwed them over well. With that idiot at the helm, the shop didn't last a year after we all left. Story 13. I used to work at a grocery store. We had a manager who was hired to run the store, but not the franchisee, and when his numbers were satisfactory enough, they would let him franchise it. So far toward a year later, and this guy was doing everything he could, making the store run and look wonderful and all the staff like one another. Out of nowhere, he's told they're putting in a franchisee bid and told him that if he wants it, he can have it. He bids, but so does one of the district manager's sons. He gets it. Original manager is of course pissed, but accepts to stay as the grocery manager if he keeps the pay rate. Fast forward and the new franchisee gets fired for not following regulations. They do the franchisee bid a second time and tell the original manager the same thing. He can have it if he wants it. They give the store to another person for a second time. I felt bad for the guy because of all his hard work and how well he treated me. Store starts going down the hill, causing a lot of change and a lot of pissed off people. I was the first one to walk out, as all of the hours were cut. The new franchisee never spoke to anyone but would bitch if we didn't do things her way. I find out 14 more people quit within a month. Story 14. 
Working at a local restaurant that had recently changed owners, multiple issues came up, difficulty getting off for important things, hiring people to work in the kitchen who were bad at their job but cheap, cheaper ingredients, etc. As well as the owner just kind of sitting around and drinking while they're not doing much. Things were tense, and after a few months, we were really just hanging in there because we liked each other. The previous owners were a sweet old couple that set a great vibe. I know some others and I were already looking for a job. Anyways, there was a young mother who waited tables there and really needed the job, but couldn't afford to be between jobs. One night she got a call that her grandmother had a severe stroke, was unresponsive and was not expected to make it through the night. She has to get off and start her three hour drive to Dallas. Manager says of course, but the owner says no. The manager and owner got into a verbal fight in the back. The waitress ended up pleading her case, crying. The manager said that if the owner wouldn't let her go, he was done. The owner ended up firing them both on the spot. Within the next 15 minutes, everyone who hadn't been recent hire ended up walking out of the building. Seven of us walked out. But one waitress, one cook, the dishwasher, and the busboy stayed. I actually never followed up to see if they finished their shift, but I think they did. I and one other were the last of the originals there. We banged out the last couple of tickets we had that were placed before the walkout. Not their fault, and I do take some pride in my work. The quality and attendance dropped for a year before the owner sold to a different guy with actual restaurant experience. The original couple returned to reopen the restaurant, and it is still going today. I'm not going to name names, no point, just let sleeping dogs lay. The waitress did make it in time to say goodbye before her grandmother passed. Story 15 I worked at McDonald's back in high school. I was taking off for college at the end of the summer and put my two week notice in so I could get August off and actually enjoy it before I had to move away for school. The store manager decided to just not put me on the schedule anymore, which I discovered on the last weekend I was at work. So instead of having those two weeks, I was just done. I decided at lunch rush that day that if they weren't going to honor the notice, I wasn't going to honor the eight hour shift. At about noonish, right after the breakfast crew had left, I was done. The thing was, most of the crew that day were also going off to college and saw what the manager had done, so they flew off with me. In the middle of the lunch rush, the store was down to the old ass lady who worked the drive through and the manager on duty. That's it. The rest of us walked out, two cashiers and three grill workers. 